Hello, welcome or welcome back to Hazel Jane Tarot and as you can see we're here to talk about my February favourites and the month began for me with the celebration of Imolc or St Bridget's Day on the 1st of February. So I started off the month then with attending an, a live event on Zoom that was hosted by my friend um, who goes by the name of Urban Heretic on Instagram, um, who hosted a, an event that sort of had a talk, um, poetry in Irish, some song in Irish, um, songs dedicated to Bridget, um, and then some other things like there was um, a meditation, a guided meditation and some ritual um, associated with Imolk. So that is um, how I marked the 1st of February this year. and. I also attended a talk on the 2nd of February that was hosted by Moon Mana, um, in uh, it was also on Zoom and it was really nice to start off the month focusing in on um, the lore around Bridget and um, you know sort of the stories and the energies associated with Bridget. I didn't actually get to make my own Bridget's Cross until later on in that first week of the month because the weather was absolutely horrendous here and it was raining very hard but I managed to go and get some rushes gathered and make my Bridget's Cross um, which is currently hanging one in the hallway over the front door and one over the back door um, as Bridget is um, associated with the threshold um, of the home. So uh, I'm, I've not got those to show you because they're up on the wall. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so at the, I was very conscious at the beginning of the month. I was seeing a lot of posts online about, you know, how to celebrate Emilk correctly. And I don't really think for me, you know, I, it would have been more appropriate to gather the rushes on the last day of January to make my uh, make my Bridget's Crosses on the 1st of January. But you know, it doesn't really matter. And um, one thing I've noticed this month is it, it, it took me a little while really to notice it happening. But I think um, Bridget Energy has been really pushing me towards doing ancestral work and working with my Irish heritage in quite a powerful way this month, um, which is something I wasn't really anticipating. So um, these are some of the pictures of Bridget that have been um, on my altar space this month. The card in the middle is actually one that I picked up at uh, Solace Bridge in Kildare. Um, I'll just have a look for the artist's name. So this is um, a silk painting by an Australian artist called Gail Donovan um, that they have uh, as like a, a wall hanging at Solace Bridge. So I just got that little postcard of it to take away. And then some of these, these are all out of different decks. So that's from the Mother's Wisdom deck. Um, from the Goddess Oracle, from the Divine Feminine Oracle and from Kyle Gray's Keeper of the Light Oracle. This is actually my favourite one of the images. The artist is Lily Moses, I believe, for this one. So working with Bridget and Bridget's energy was a big part of the month of February for me. Um, now how that manifested, I'll, I'll explain in a little minute. Uh, my card pulls for the month of February um, when I did my year ahead reading were these. These are from the Spirit Keepers Tarot um, first edition and Vitruvian edition. Um, so the card I pulled, um, they just were so appropriate. Um, I don't normally share my personal cards for the month, um, but these just <laughs> were so appropriate. It really, um, it felt like something to share. And maybe I'm not the only one who was feeling the energies of these cards this month. Um, the Emperor was my card that I pulled for the energies around me in the month of February. And you know, as we continue here in Northern Ireland and in the UK and in many other countries to be uh, in, a, in a lockdown around the coronavirus, there's a lot of heavy restrictions and government guidelines and this sense of the, you know, the, I keep always think of the square, you know, in regards to the emperor of the four sides and the, the rigidity of that structure, the sense of being maybe some people might feel in a positive way held by the rules and the, um, the care of you know the the oversight of government or some people might be feeling quite restricted by the 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 rules that have been put in place but that sense of being surrounded by rules and regulations um was very strong through the month of february and my personal energy was <laughs> the four of cups four of chalices and that really seemed 
quite apt at times this month. I mean, as you'll see, I, I did um, was quite busy with work and, and quite a lot of things um, have were happening in terms of, um, you know, things I was getting involved with just from home in terms of study and so on. But um, there were definitely have have definitely been times this month where that feeling of ennui, of disengagement, of um, just being over it, <laughs> um, I think is uh, is maybe not I'm maybe not alone in that. Um, through the month of February, it's been a bit of a grind, and uh, I mean I know it's in a sense there's there's a privilege in this position of feeling feeling disengaged because that means there are no big crises happening you know and um and I've been very lucky and with my family you know we're all in good health and so on so I am obviously very grateful for that but um this this um, mood certainly um was at times the mood of uh, of the month of February and um, maybe as a result of that one of the things that I didn't really get so into this month was my daily card draws. I was really into that through the month of January and was put, making daily card pulls and really enjoying the combinations of decks and used quite a few different decks in January. Through the month of February, I started off doing daily card pulls with the Modern Love Tarot, thinking it would be very appropriate because, you know, love in February and Valentine's Day and so on. And I just wasn't feeling it at all. And I ended up using these two decks instead and not using them every single day. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, where I'm just at Hazel Jane Tarot, all one word, I did post a, a photo of my my monthly tally of my cards, and it was maybe about half the month that I'd actually drew cards for that day. So these two decks are Tarot of the Moon Garden and the Sacred Island Celtic Moon Oracle deck, which is made by uh, Moon Mana. Um, so uh, the the creators are. Karen Ward and Bernie Sexton. Sorry, um, I say that that's the creators of this um, Oracle deck. I have no idea who the creators of Tower of the Moon Garden are. I have had it for such a long, a long time. Um, I believe it was published by US Games. But this was the deck, my very first tarot deck. As you can see, it has been trimmed. If you're familiar with this deck, it has white borders. It wasn't trimmed because I didn't like the borders. It was trimmed because I tried to edge the borders and the cards were so old and very worn at the edges and I made a complete mess of it. <laughs> so I had to trim it to get rid of the horrendous bleeding mess of the edges of the cards. So I find actually these two decks worked quite well together, even though they're different sizes. So they looked a bit, you know, off on my easel. I find that the the messages that I pulled and the card combinations I pulled and the colors of these decks were quite complementary. Some of the these cards are very purpley um, in this um, Sacred Moon or Sacred Ireland Celtic Moon deck, and the obviously there's a very dominant purple and then a bluey purple border in um, in the Tower of the Moon Garden, so they looked really nice together. But I, I, I don't have any of the cards, you know, I haven't set up any combinations here, so I have no idea what's coming up. But um, the, the combinations of messages um, and between the two cards, I find made quite a coherent reading for me each day when I pull the cards. The, like, look at that, Queen of Staffs and Passion. You couldn't really get a better combination. And so I really enjoyed working with these two decks together. And I must um, again acknowledge, uh, sorry, I'm having a blank. Don Michelle at Boho Tarot, who um, got me onto this idea of showing in the in your video the, the two decks side by side for the card combinations. Um, but yes, this uh, these two decks worked really nicely together. And I actually have continued, I used them, as I say, about half the time for daily draws in in February. And I'm continuing to use them at the moment um, in March for my daily draws as well. So we'll see how long I, I keep wanting to use those. But I think the the sort of, the energy for me of the Tower of Moon Garden, it's a deck I've hardly touched in years because it was my very, very, very first tarot deck. And obviously I have a lot more options now. But Maybe there was something about that sort of ennui um, and disengagement of that I felt sometimes in February 
turning back to this really old tarot deck that um, I have that long-term connection to um, really was quite comforting and nice to work with. And then, as you'll see in a minute, um, working with decks that have an Ireland connection was a very big theme for me through the month of February. And that's maybe the, uh, as I say, Bridget at work <laughs> um, pushing me a little bit more in that direction of um, ancestral work and connecting with um, my Irish heritage. So um, I'll maybe just very quickly show you a couple of other things. Um, part of that connection with um, my Irish heritage has been working on studying the Irish language. And this is the book that I've been using. And I'm studying a course, like a course on Zoom through uh, an Irish language centre that is in um, based in Derry, which is a city too far away from me to commute to for a class. So it's nice that it's on Zoom. Um, and I've been really enjoying it, really, really enjoying learning the Irish language. It's something that I studied in school briefly, but never gained any kind of mastery of. And I'm very much at the stage of learning, you know, basic greetings and talking about the weather, but I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, another thing I did a lot in the month of February was listen to the Hamilton soundtrack. <laughs> um, I saw Hamilton on Disney Plus uh, way back last year when it first was released and absolutely loved it. I got the soundtrack for Christmas and just in February started listening to it. And I mean, I have just been listening to it on repeat to, this, to the point of, you know, I'll get to the end of a certain song and just rewind back and listen to that song again, like My Shot or... Um, Oh, the Satisfied is amazing. Wait for it. Amazing. The Room Where It Happened. Oh, there's so many great songs. It's a fantastic, fantastic musical. I love musicals. So, um, But yes, um, most of the world has listened to Hamilton at this point, I think, or a lot. Well, you know, that's silly. The people who are able to have access to this sort of thing. A lot of people have listened to Hamilton already. So if you're familiar with Hamilton, um, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, those songs are are great. Uh, reading wise, I mentioned at the end of January, I was reading this um, book, The Conventicle of Magpies by Elmar Clark. Um, I finished it really quickly into February. I absolutely loved it. Really, really loved it. Um, it's a really fast paced uh, kind of, how would I describe it? Well, it's, it's described as a gas lamp fantasy. So it's set in a sort of a Victorian England kind of place, but it's not, it's a fan, it's a, a made up place. And, um, yeah, it, uh, it was just a really, really enjoyable story with mystery and, you know, struggle against, a, you know, a government and, um, of the sort of oppressed people, um, in the city and, I mean, I can't really explain the plot um, very easily but because there's a lot going on in it. But A Conventicle of Magpies by Elmer Clark, I highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, I also re I read a couple of other books that were were so-so, but I also really, really enjoyed this one. <laughs> so this is a the fourth book in a series. Um, Jill Sims is a British, um, British writer and her first book was called Why Mommy Drinks. So if you're interested and you've never heard of the series, that's where to start with why mommy drinks this is the fourth one why mommy is sloshed and it's just I mean her observations it's fiction yeah so but the observations in it in the first person narrator um of the mommy in the story um her observations about um family life and being a mom and uh by this stage of the story she has quite older teenagers but the earlier novels she had younger children it's just really funny it made me laugh out loud and a lot of the the observations really rang true and I found myself reading bits of it out loud to um, to my partner, but also probably a little bit annoyingly, you know, to friends on uh, on voice memos and so on, <laughs> um, because I thought they would really get the, the humour or the reference in a particular bit. So this is a book I really, really enjoyed this month. OK, so you've been watching for 14 minutes. Where are the decks? I hear you say. So I got a couple of new decks this month um, and I I was planning to only buy two decks a month. I mean, it's not hardly a, a depth year <laughs> to only limit yourself to two decks a month, but I had um, not wanted to, to buy too many. 
Um, I ended up buying three decks this month. Um, the first deck that I purchased was the Celtic Wisdom Tarot Pack by Caitlin Matthews with art by Olivia Rayner. So this comes, there's a hardback book in this box. So it's quite a, it's quite a big box. Um, and I didn't do any unboxings or anything of the, any of these decks because the, I was aware before I got it that the Celtic Wisdom Tarot is its own system. And I felt like rather than show my kind of, my lack of understanding of how the system worked when I would unbox the deck. I would wait until I really got to know it and um, do a proper review of the deck and explain how it works and so on. So I'm still in the process of getting to know it. I really, 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 really like it. Um, it seems to be predominantly a mixture of uh, Irish and Welsh lore. Um, so I'll just give you a, a look at some of the cards. So there, that is Bridget um, depicted as the magician. So in the the various there's your, your courts are renamed as as you can see we've got knowledge which is our earth element battle which is i believe the air element art is the cups the water element and then all of your major arcana have been changed and the numbers have all been changed as well so like aces or auguries you can see three there is courtship and your court cards have all been renamed. So it really is its own system. Um, the Major Arcana appear to use uh, deities, Cel Celtic deities from sort of pan-Celtic deities um, who, that exist in Europe, um, in Britain, in Ireland. Uh, whereas the Minor Arcana seem to deal predominantly with, um, in the courts, sort of principal figures um, and gods and goddesses from again predominantly Irish and Welsh mythologies and then the minor arcana they don't tell one narrative story across a suit there's lots of different narratives that are referenced across the across the um, the different minor arcana cards so every card really is capturing um, a different figure from the lore or a different story from the lore and there's quite a lot to take in. <laughs> some of these figures I'm familiar with already and some of them are brand new to me. And I love the art, absolutely beautiful. And uh, some of the characters come up in more than one card. So I will not say too much more about that now, but it's, um, it's one that I have read with. I have done some of the readings from the guidebook. I have done some just more general like week ahead readings using it and I have found it reads really well for me. So um, that is um, a really really interesting deck. Another deck I bought this month is in this bag and it is um, sorry, the Story Medicine Tarot Animal Woman edition. It's the second edition and as you can see it's still in the plastic. Um, I ordered it, um, I hadn't intended to get it so soon, but the um, Little Red Tarot was closing um, closing up for a, f a couple of months, I think, and I knew this was the deck that I really wanted to get, so I thought I would order it before um, before the shop closed, um, because it's um, very difficult to get in the UK if Little Red Tarot isn't available. So I've kept that in the bag, in the plastic, and I'm saving it for later whenever that might be, when I um, have the time and the focus and the energy to, to vote to it. Because my energies have been more focused in terms of tarot on these other new decks. So the Celtic Wisdom, as I just showed you, and this one, the Fairy Wicca Tarot. Now, this is one that I have to thank uh, Bonnie at Old Soul Mermaid for um, tipping me off to this deck. I didn't even know it existed. And if I had heard of it, I wouldn't have looked at a deck called the Fairy Wicca Tarot because I'm not into Wicca and I'm not really into fairies, you know, of the kind of <laughs> fairies of the kind that, you know, you might see depicted in this kind of a deck. <laughs> um, I'm not really interested in, in that. So the title of the deck wouldn't have appealed to me. But watching um, Bonnie had done, she'd got like a, an amazing deck haul of... Um, decks at her local half price books if I can find that video I'll try to link it in the comments below um but she showed this deck and I was just really blown away by how it features um figures from Irish mythology 
exclusively and um, uses the Irish language as well. So the, the minor arcana are very pippish, as you can see. And then we have the major arcana and the courts. Um, and they, they all tell different stories, but they all come back to Irish um, Irish mythology, like the Book of Invasions and the, the Ulster Cycle and all the, the sort of um, the really foundational Irish myths. And even more so than the Celtic Wisdom Tarot, which, as I said, shows a mixture of Cal Irish and Welsh deities and stories and some sort of broader pan-Celtic, European and and British myths, this is, is pretty much uh, only an Irish deck. Um, so, for example, like this character of Maka, Maka is in the Maka is in the Celtic Wisdom Tarot as well. Maka actually also appears in the Celtic Moon Oracle. You know, she, she's one of those important um, important figures. And Armaka, the the town Arma, the city that that is named after. Um, her is is in Northern Ireland actually um so I mean I'll not get into telling you the whole story now I'll maybe save that for when I do a deep dive into this deck um but the this is the card I got for my first card pull from the deck which is temperance um Ishka Koshrika um this is holy water well that's what it says there holy water <laughs> um but the names being all written in uh, in the Irish language um is great because obviously as I said I'm starting to study the Irish language again um and like so eight of domen domen is earth in Irish um we have uh you know there's the era for the mother for the empress we have um Ahar Dia Dagda the father god Dagda for the emperor you know so it's just um i really love that and the so the other elements in the minors uh chin is fire and then we have we have ishka for water so those the the elements are well they haven't gone for the irish numbers they've they've gone for the irish words for the for the elements um and the, the whole way the system works in terms of the miners being pathways through the four realms of the two of Danon, representing the four provinces of Ulster. It's quite complicated. I haven't fully got my head around it all yet. Um, and how, I haven't actually read with this deck at all yet. I have just been um, enjoying looking at the cards and reading some of the stories. Um, so there for death, we have the Banshee. We have um, the Morrigan for the chariot you know so just really fantastic art really intriguing um interpretations of the myths for these um for these cards and i love the art and it's really lovely to look at so um oh we've gone out of focus sorry so the um this uh fairy wisdom oracle i think it's gonna or fairy wicca oracle i think it's gonna be um a deck that i really enjoy working with but so that was one of the other new decks this month so as you can see sort of from the decks that I got new and the decks that I've been working with um there's been a big presence of Celtic energy of Irish energy and um uh with the studying Irish as well it's just been uh really focused in my free time on that sort of thing and it's as I say I mean I I hold an Irish passport um, being in, in Northern Ireland you can kind of choose whether whether you want to have an Irish passport or a British passport or indeed both um, but you know I've always had an Irish passport and sort of taken my Irishness for granted but um, not being particularly political or anything um, not really engaged terribly closely with it either like there's a sense sometimes in um there's a sense sometimes in northern ireland that to be engaged with um cultural things to do with ireland can be politicized um as a republican and and that's not something that i was particularly interested in engaging with um but 
this month has been a really interesting time of just engaging with my sort of the, the heritage of these myths and legends through these different tarot and oracle decks and through the studying of the Irish language and that's been really really positive and it's funny I hadn't even thought of it as doing ancestral work until Archie and Panda um, hello if you're watching, um, had made a comment on one of my Instagram posts about ancestral work being so important and I just sort of went, oh my goodness, <laughs> that's actually what I've been doing. So just to finish off um, for the month of February, um, one of the things that I did at the very start of the month when I attended the um, the live Zoom event um, to celebrate Imolk was to actually sing um, a traditional Irish song for Bridget in Irish. <laughs> Um, and I thought I'd finish off by singing that for you today. So if you're still watching, <laughs> thank you, Gourmet Yogurt, um, for watching for 25 whole minutes as I rambled on about my month of February. I hope you had a lovely month of February too. I'd love to hear what you got up to in the comments. And um, so this song, uh, Goa Malta Bridge, um, as I say, I'm not fluent in Irish, so I've been learning this and trying to learn the correct pronunciation. Um, so the, the translation of the song, the lyrics go... I praise Bridget, beloved of Ireland, beloved in all countries, let us all praise her. The bright torch of Leinster, shining throughout the country, the pride of Irish youth, the pride of our gentle women. The house of winter is very dark, cutting with its sharpness, but on Bridget's day, spring is near to Ireland. Go Malta Bridget on one eleven, on one lagak chiri, mula mishkulieri, lakran kyal na lainak, so shu yal na chira. Canera with Erin, Canna Manner Minya Chigan Garajindu Gara Lena Yara Akhla Labri. Guard we never again. Gormayogat, thank you for listening, and I'll see you again next month.